I give you Roma. We arrived at one o'clock where we just decided to take a nap due to jet lag, where it became nighttime. One of the first things after taking out my camera is that I noticed that um, Europe has a 50 hertz electricity, and that makes the lights flicker a little bit differently, and that makes my camera look like this. On our first night, we had a tour of just general Rome. Our meeting place was at the bottom of the great Spanish steps at the foot of church and a great obelisk. Past this fountain, which we passed again about a billion times, and eventually made our way over to the Pantheon. The Pantheon is the largest unreinforced concrete dome in the world. Pantheon means all the gods, but this is kind of weird since this is now a Catholic church. We then visited the Piazza Navona, where in the middle is a fountain of the four rivers. Each statue in it represents a different continent that was known at the time. The place was surrounded by street vendors selling random odds and ends and cheap goods that for anybody who wanted to buy them. The next day, we were very prompt in missing our 8 o'clock tour at the Colosseum. So we decided to just set out on our own and just explore the city. We were looking for this ancient monk crypt where the bones were all organized in a very artful way. We had literally made it over there and it's quite beautiful, but I couldn't film in there, so I just have to tell you about it. Sorry. The Colosseum. It's impressive in pictures and it's impressive in person. It's just huge. It's actually right next to the Roman Forum where Caesar would have lived back in his day. All the Caesars. There's about a dozen of them maybe? I don't know. And this over here is ancient Rome. They had the ancient courthouse and the place where Caesar was burned after he died. A tu brute. You know, they say all roads lead to Rome. And there's actually some fact to that. Back in, back in the ancient times when they built the roads, all roads led straight out from Rome, which meant all the armies could get directly to where they were ruling. So on the third day, we finally made it over to the Vatican. So we have left Italy, and yet we're still in those city walls of Rome. Why not? Well, you know what I mean. What I meant to say was that it's a country within a city, and you're not going to get that anywhere else in the world. This is the center of all Catholic dealings. I mean, it's the Vatican, the Pope's home. It even has St. Peter's Basilica, the largest church in the world. Working with the same company as before, we got a tour of the entire Vatican, specific, specifically more the, um, the gallery areas, which had a nice model of the place. Quick fact is that ball on top of the, on top of the church is the same size as that ball in the courtyard, which is a testament to the size of the entire building. This is actually the um, courtyard of the gallery of the stuff that the popes have gathered since the beginning of the Vatican and they have quite a collection. It was really very impressive, to be quite honest. They had statues from the ancient Greeks, and apparently they were very fond of the Greeks, and they stole, that's why they stole a lot of their, you know, statues and stuff. Back then, the popes were like kings, and they could just claim whatever they wanted when they wanted it. Even some of the material used to build the Vatican was taken off some of the ancient Roman buildings in the area, like bronze and other stuff. I don't know if you get to take videos in here. Like everything in the Vatican, the Sistine Chapel is quite beautiful. It was painted by Michelangelo and it has this huge Last Judgment painting on the back wall. The Sistine Chapel is the personal chapel of the Pope and the place where the new popes are elected. 
like like you see in Angels and Demons. The amazing thing is Michelangelo didn't even want to paint this originally. When Pope Julius II asked him to do this, he just said no thanks. He was a sculptor, not a painter. But eventually, after nagging and nagging, they got him to do it, and he definitely did a great job. At that point, he was given a lot of creative freedom, but he did, he did create one of the big, greatest masterpieces of all time. Like we have some of the most recognizable paintings in the world in this room. Our next destination was the center of the Vatican, St. Peter's Basilica. St. Peter's Basilica is the largest church in the world, and of course named after St. Peter, the very first pope who was crucified at this very location. This place is huge. It's two football fields long and one football field high at the top of the dome. And, and again, it's quite a beautiful place to just look at. The cross on the altar is actually right above St. Peter's tomb, well, supposedly. After our visit to the Vatican, we decided to have dinner, but this place happened to be outside the Pantheon, and that was pretty cool. You don't get to do that every day. And then, we had some gelato. We finally got around to visiting the Colosseum. We took a mini tour of the Forum, but the, the real feature was definitely the Colosseum. This is the Arx of Titus right here, which is very significant in the Jewish world because of the its inner sculpture. So the Colosseum was like, like it looks like. It's a sporting arena where gladiators used to play in the ancient Roman days. They would have entered here and came out and fought each other, or animals, and this is just a giant stadium. It's comparable to the size of a giant stadium in New York. The emperor would have sat here, and the people would have sat in seats like this. Of course, the entire place was lined like that until an earthquake back, way back when. This is probably the most recognizable landmark in Rome and the fact that you can still go in it, it's still structurally sound and it's just an amazing place is mind-blowing. The ruins down there are actually the basement under the um, sporting place. So we tried to get out one way but it turns out that wasn't the exit and we had to turn around and go back in. We eventually made it up to the top of the Victor Emmanuel Monument, which on top of you can get the entire Roman experience from a bird's eye view. It's quite breathtaking actually, even though the Romans weren't too fond of the main place itself because it tried to outdo the ancient Romans. Still cool though. Our last site was the Castel Sant'Angelo, which was built for Hadrian as a museum mausoleum for himself and his family. Since then, as, since then, it has served as a fortress, prison, barracks, and museum like it is today. The original part was actually the inner tower in which we are standing, and that right there was the original statue that was on top of it. It's, and again, it has a great view of Rome. You can see St. Peter's Basilica, and the Pantheon and pretty much any other major landmark in Rome. This great castle actually contains a secret passageway to the Vatican. And it's actually not in the location that it is in Angels of Demons, but elsewhere um, along the outer wall. It has served as a fortress for emperors, barbarians, and popes alike. We now have a little restaurant up there where you can get like a drink or something if you're thirsty or if you ever want to um, grab a snack. But it's definitely a fun place to go visit. 
it's not as historically um, significant as, as other places, but it's definitely a, a, a good location nonetheless. And what fortress wouldn't be complete without a catapult and some cannonballs? <laughs> like I said, this was a fortress, and you know, you can't yet yeah, can't have a fortress without having a defensible. And we have Caesar, and some other guy. This here is actually the oldest church in Rome. It's not in the castle, but it's the oldest building that was actually built as a church, which is pretty cool, actually. They took, they took some columns from other monuments in Rome, from old buildings, and you actually notice when, you, when, a, when it goes back to that shot that some of them are actually different from each other. The mosaics up on the ceiling definitely held up better than some of the other paintings that we've seen in, the, um, in other churches. That night was New Year's Eve, and we thought we'd uh, take our chances with the crowd and head out into the center of Rome, out by the Forum. And we're glad we did. I mean, we had a great view of the monument until we walked around and found out, saw other people with shooting off fireworks, and eventually we saw the, the real deal at midnight. It should be noted that this was an awesome experience. Like, I could not act fast for a better New Year's. I mean, we got to see the fireworks above the Colosseum. Happy New Year! You definitely go don't get to see that every day. Not even every New Year. Especially if you're not from here. But, great vacation. Glad we went. Happy New Year. Happy New Year.